I'm Lady T506. Welcome to my channel. Hello, everyone's everyone's. I am here for Manifest Season 1, Episode 3. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Y'all, I'm going to try to keep up with this show, but y'all don't seem to be watching my videos lately. I don't know what it is. I know Manifest is not everybody's cup of tea, but I love a good mystery. We're trying to figure out what didn't happen to these people, what's going on with them. Something about that little boy, I think he's going to be the key to everything that happened i don't know why i just always think it's always the child he's the key but anyways the family they are on edge because the lady from the last episode who was going and doing the interview she was killed so now they're thinking was it because she was doing the interviews that got her killed remember we had that crazy lady that went up to the little boy was saying he's the second coming you know we on edge right now we don't want to know what to do then the doctor lady, she calls and says there was a a protein marker found in the little boy's blood that wasn't there before they got on before like five years ago, and it's not caused by the cancer. And she just thinks that's weird. Like she's been keeping daddy all informed, but I was like, I don't know if like the government is watching everything she's doing because you know. Stuff like it get you paranoid. Like, does the gov how did the government doing that? Like, when we got that message last week, like that was kind of creepy. They was able to access our phone that easily. But I always think that somebody's, you know, looking. I always got to look over your shoulder. Like, who's surveilling who? I've always been that kind of person. I'm a very suspicious person. Get it from my mama. I'm not even gonna lie. But you know, she been keeping daddy informed. So now the dad and the sister. I think we're gonna call her Mick. I'm trying to get everybody's name in control, but the daddy and the sister, you know, he didn't think since he didn't help rescue those two little girls on episode one that he's some kind of a help. Like we did better than what the police was doing. So let's go over to the house and figure out what was going on. And the husband said that the only thing that was missing was this gold necklace that he had given the wife. And that was that would be like all the stuff in the house just this one gold necklace they had a suspect out in the car because he was found with blood all on her but there was no gun and there was no necklace but i'm like if y'all was if y'all found him this close to the scene of the crime you would think that you would have found you know the gun that was used to kill her and the necklace but we haven't but we're gonna get to that in a little bit but the nsa shows up and sees them and it's like did you know that they had you know was acquaintances with the lady that was killed and posed like no she didn't tell me that now mind you the sister she's on the police force but that is not her jurisdiction but now they wondering why is the nsa yes sure this woman was on the you know plane that disappeared for five and a half years but why are they so concerned about her body that's the question i was like i didn't think about that till y'all said that but you know, they leave, come back, you know, talk to the husband on his own. And he says, once Kelly came back, she was a totally different person. She thought that they had too big of a house, that she wanted to downsize. I guess she wanted to get a tiny house. They was living, we just living too fancy out here. We we spend too much money. We just were too fancy. And she felt that they was under surveillance because she was getting all these, on, when she get on the phone, I'm assuming they had a landline. My grandma still has a landline. I guess that co could come in handy. Like, we just go pause for the calls one time. I th This was like in 2004. Me and my mama, we had landlines at the time. We had cell phones as well. But, like, the um, transformer outside of our house or in our general area, it was, like, right by our house. Blue. And all the electricity just went out in the whole neighborhood. Now, mind you, this is like July. So, you know it was smoking hot outside. And we couldn't figure out what to do. Like, we, okay, we need to go to my grandma's house. But, you know, most people at the time had cordless phones. Now, thank, thankfully, my mama still had that one old phone with the little curl to it. You know, one of them phones you had to pick up and you could just 
that phone. I can't think what it's called right now. But we still have one of those, you know, to make all arrangements so we can go with my grandma's house. But anyways, I'm assuming they still had a landline. She kept on hearing all kind of like on the phone. On top of that, there was a black car that been like parked outside. So she was under surveillance and, you know, she was a little bit scared. And the maid also said that, you know, she went to the mall to get her hair done and she came up all bruised talking about some she had felt falling down. Well, they was like they found that to be odd. Her whole behavior changed. You know, she went from, you know, I I love all the fanciness that what we have to coming back to like, you know what, we have entirely too much. This house is too big for just the two of us. Uh uh-uh. uh. The sister at one point, she goes to visit her friend's parents. Now, she, you know, it's been five and a half years, and at this time, her friend, she was driving a car, she, the sister was driving, her name was Mick, gotta say that, she was driving a car, her and her friend was drunk, and they got an accident, and the friend died. And the last time she see them, she tried to go over there while they was grieving, and it was like, how dare you show up when you was responsible for our daughter's death, I don't want to see you right now, excuse the line people outside. So she goes over there now and the mom's like, oh, hey, girls, happy to see you. Look at these curtains I got. And she was like, you know, kind of confused. The mother has Alzheimer's. The father's like, I just tell her that the daughter's going down to the store because it's easier than seeing her heart break every 15 minutes. No, now, at this point, you know, she's realized, okay, that mama has Alzheimer's. And now she's like, just thinking like, what can I do to just like, clear my mind and get back on my right self because I forgot what the thing was like own your truth or something like that that was the thing like Kelly the lady who was doing the interview she kept on saying that over and over she now Mick is hearing that over and over so she goes over to her friend's parents house again and the daddy's freaked out like look here I, I've stepped out for 10 minutes and now my wife is gone the police told me to stay here in case she comes back but you take my car keys and you go find my wife but she hasn't driven since that accident one because she's been gone for five and a half years and two i think her license was taken away for some reason but as she's driving she sees you know her friend's mom and she kind of like stops the car in front of the mom so the mom won't get hit because she's in the middle of the street and she looks over and the maid has the Doc Kelly's necklace just riding shotgun in her car. Now I'm like, I know you were, you know, you not your everyday, you know, you know, robber or thief, if you will. But I would think that you would have more sense than having this necklace riding shotgun with you. It's just what I'm thinking. Now I apologize if my audio video is not on point. I am on my webcam doing videos on my phone is just not the business because i can hear some kind of rambling in the background and i would like to edit my videos to make it look a little more pretty but anyway back to this she is riding shotgun with kelly's necklace come to find out the maid was mad that kelly was back kelly they thought kelly was gone she had the husband to herself but not in a romantic type of way he was doing better he was eating better he was looking healthier and him being better made her better but kelly come back and was treating her like the maid but i'm like lady you are the maid she was treating you like your drop title is and she didn't like that so she felt that she needed to kill kelly she didn't mind that some young man who was all about you know you guys are special that y'all don't come back that he was gonna go to jail for the crime she was just all about i need to get rid of kelly because this man is a good man come to find out that kelly i'm going back up kelly and her husband they owned a mall and but they were some slum lords before you know the whole her missing for five and a half years and they only had illegals owning like different businesses inside the mall like, I know you are here illegally, and I'm going to charge you 40% more from, you know, running your stuff inside my mall. They was they was some ruthless people. So, you know, she had went to the mall to get her hair done or, or get her hair done. And one of the ladies there thought that, you know, she was there to collect on money and got scared and pushed her. But come to find out, she was like, no, she didn't want to do none of that no more. She was going to tell her husband, we're going to stop, you know, overcharging these people. This is not right. And I guess this is when, you know, 
maid lady stepped in and was like, I'm not going to let you do that because, you know, husband dude, he happy right now. You done come back and just squashed all of our plans. So that was the just everything. If er, Everything. If, if, if you are new to my channel, welcome. Feel free to subscribe. Make sure your notifications on and comment. So that was the just if I left anything out, bomb music. But Cop, rate this video, comment, and subscribe, and share this free, share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and here on YouTube. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.